Well, first of all, he's going to get a new lease of life uh, at Selhurst Park because he was really stagnating uh, at, at West Ham over the last couple of seasons, in fact. Um, could be played and in different positions, didn't really have a defined role in the team. He was never going to uh, fit in Manuel Pellegrini's system, so that's why he was so uh, surplus to requirements at West Ham. Um, he struggled say, over the last couple of seasons, but his first two years uh, in East London um, were very were very good. And he, he excelled under Slavin Bilic, especially in that final season at Upton Park, um, playing a dominant central midfield role, and he, he excelled brilliantly. Seasons, he kind of just lost his way a little bit, um, struggled with a couple of injury problems, or a little niggly ones, nothing too serious. It kept him out for a, for a long period of time but just kind of little niggly ones he picked up here and there and it, it, just, it just disrupted his rhythm. He worked very hard off the ball. I think um, last season, we'd have seen it especially, even though he had a pretty poor season, if you were just watching him week in, week out, uh, his work off the ball, uh, the, the, the people, all those stats people that do those kinds of things, they ran stats on him and he was actually one of the more effective players um, in the West Ham squad with his work off the ball, uh, closing down, making challenges, things like that. The only more successful player, if you compared Palace and West Ham, uh, was James Tompkins. Um, and obviously we all know where he came from when he moved to Selhurst Park a couple of seasons ago. Um, even saw Kuyate at times on the Billich last season playing at right back after uh, James Collins was sold to, uh, James Collins? After James Tompkins, sorry, was sold to Crystal Palace uh, and he was, he was just not the answer there. Um, so, that's what, so that's something he struggled with over the past couple of seasons. He's your archetypal central midfielder that is strong, good, or decent on the ball. I wouldn't say he's excellent on the ball by any stretch, but he's good on the ball. Uh, he's got a good engine on him, uh, but I say it, it, things just fizzled out for him at West Ham. And there's a couple of videos knocking around you. You've probably seen him where uh, he's not exactly putting a lot of effort in to chase things down, uh, chase defenders down. But on his day, he's a very good central midfielder on his day. I think nine and a half million that's the reported figure that uh, Palace have bought him for. I think that's a bit of a bargain, really. I think they could have got a lot more uh, than that. Originally, West Ham wanted 15 million, so I'm not, I'm not trying, kind of sure what happened there. Uh, it's a good technically on the ball, a good passer of the ball. He's a goal threat as well, especially from set pieces, because he's tall, he's very strong. Um, corners and free kicks. We've seen him score a fair few headers uh, for West Ham over the years. And he's also got a bit of decent right foot on him as well. If he, once he puts some foot, once he puts some power behind it, he can certainly hit a ball pretty hard. Um, not always on target, but when he does, well, when he, when, when, when he does hit, hit the target, he invariably does find a net. Um, more through pay, sheer power than anything else. Um, weaknesses, to say, he, he, he can really drift in and out of games. I mean, if he's having a poor game, he can be really quite anonymous. It's not like you can just carry him through. Uh, it's really noticeable when he's having a having a poor game, uh, and he won't. He, he will more than likely be substituted in those games. To um, say defensively, he can be a bit positionally a little bit iffy sometimes as well. Uh, for those of Palace fans, I'm sure they're not very many, but I've seen some things in the media saying, "Oh yeah, this is going to be uh, a replacement for Johan Kabai." Absolutely not. Don't even think that for a second. Because uh, they're two completely different players, Akiate and uh, and Johan Kabai. Set pieces for one, as in taking them. Akiate is a threat form set pieces, but not taking them, not like Kabai was. Still a very good signing though for, for Palace. I think he's exactly what they need. Uh, he'll bring a bit of steel in there alongside Milivojevic. He's not going to be the most creative man uh, on the planet, but then again, Palace have just signed Max Meyer as well, who's obviously been pointing to do that job, so it doesn't really matter. So yeah, I think with Kiarte, you've got to be patient with him as well. It might take him a little bit of time to get up to speed because he's, he's had a rough couple of seasons. Not that he's lost confidence as such, but just lost his way a bit. Um, so, but he knows the Premier League, he knows what it's all about, and he can always refer back to those first couple of seasons he had at Upton Park when he was, say, really good uh, under Slavin Bilic in the last uh, season under Allardyce as well. So that's what that's pretty much all there is about about Kiyate. He's also he's also a fantastic character off the pitch. Many people would have seen that video of him singing a Dimitri Payet chant um, once he had a few too many drinks. I think uh, players or Wolves do at the end of the season. Uh, he's a great presence uh, in and around the squad. He's got a wicked sense of humour. Great fun to be around. He always brings a smile to face. He's always smiling as well, despite him potentially not having the best run of form over the last couple of seasons. So. In conclusion, yeah, I think he's a he's a good signing for Palace. He's exactly what they need. Um, he's not going to be a 
a too huge a loss to West Ham because they've replaced uh, they've replaced him sufficiently in the centre midfield and they've got strength in depth there as well. So he was never going to fit into Pellegrini's uh, way of way of uh, way of playing. I think he will thrive under Roy Hodgson. And I think the most important thing to say is that he is going to get a bit of a new lease of life now uh, in in South East London. He wanted to stay in the capital because he settled there with family there. Uh, so I think it's a good move for him. It's a good move for all parties, really. Uh, so yeah, that's my uh, strengths and weaknesses on on Cheku Piatto. Mm-hmm.